So this video we're looking at inductance. Um, we're going to start off with mutual inductance because it follows on from transformers quite nicely. Remember the transformer, um, you have a coil of wire, you have an iron core to, um, to concentrate and to help share the, the magnetic flux, the magnetic field lines. Um, and you have to have a changing voltage in your primary to produce um, the changing voltage because we saw from Faraday's law that the, um, that the voltage is equal to negative the change in um, <coughs> excuse me sorry carry on change in flux uh, this was Faraday's law is equal to change in flux over the change in time um, and the negative is referring to Lenz's law where the um, induced voltage acts to oppose the change um, that caused it so uh, we'll get to that in a little bit more detail there's a big application to do with that uh, in terms of self-inductance and opposition to change um, we commonly find an inductor in electronic circuitry but anyway so that's how a transformer works now um, going on from this we have uh, the concept that the change in flux must be proportional to the change in the current okay so you change the current and you cause a change in the magnetic field lines produced in that primary coil um, it turns out that when you do some experimentation um, the change in flux has a nice proportionality, well, it's not necessarily nice, but it's a proportionality constant. So the current times this M, which is our mutual inductance, okay, that's mutual inductance, uh, and, to, and the units of the mutual inductance is Henry. So Henry's, the mutual inductance is just a proportionality constant. Um, let's complete that circuit so it works probably. It's, it's just a proportionality constant, um, and it gives us a slightly different equation uh, in instead of using uh, Faraday's law in this form. It'll give you the induced voltage equals negative um, mutual inductance times the change in current over the change in time. I'll just double check I got that right. Yes. Um, and again, M, the unit is Henry, like, um, like the name. It's named after a guy called Joseph Henry, who uh, in the 1800s, along with Michael Faraday, was experimenting with all this, and they both discovered all this independently. And um, apparently it was given, uh, Faraday seems to get the share of the, the, the lion's share of all of the, um, the, the notoriety for this. Um, but Henry also did this and, and um, in honour of him, uh, he gets to have mutual inductance and inductance unit named after him. So it's just a proportionality constant. Um, the larger the mutual inductance, um, obviously the larger the magnetic flux produced for the current that's running through it. So a higher inductance means it's going to be more efficient. Okay, anyway, uh, moving on to self-inductance and opposition to change. Um, this is uh, a little bit, just a little bit different, but has quite drastic um, results. In a circuit, uh, if you have a, a direct current um, supply and you have your inductor, okay, this is just a single coil, we can stick an iron file uh, in there to, to uh, make it, um, uh, whatchamacallit, stronger, Whew. okay, um, and let's just have a lamp in the circuit. And what will happen when you turn on the circuit, if you have a switch, and the moment you close the switch, um, it's going to take a moment for that light. That light's going to slowly come on. And we're not just talking about turning on and warming up. It'll actually take a while before it comes on. If it was an LED, same thing, it would take a little bit of time to come on. And that's because this inductor will induce a voltage which opposes the change that produced it. So initially when you close that switch there's a voltage across um, the across the inductor okay or there's current that's pushed through the inductor and um, that produces a magnetic field uh, inside the coil and that magnetic field according to Lenz's law will oppose the change that produced it which will produce a voltage in the opposite direction which will resist that current flow coming on. Now, um, because of conservation of energy, it can't be more than, and it has to act in response to, so it's only going to be a, a little bit less than and um, than what that current... It's, remember, it's related to the change as well. So, um, going back up to out here, our induced voltage is equal to, um, or proportional to the change in flux that's produced it. So, as soon as you turn that on, that change is going to be maximum. 
and then that change is going to decrease as um, as the current builds up uh, slowly and goes from a non-zero uh, positive number up slowly. So that voltage that's induced to oppose it is also going to decrease, and that's why you can actually turn it on. Okay, so it slowly comes on, but um, it turns out you can do the same thing, um, same same exactly the same process of of this current is proportional to the flux inside the coil. Um, and we can have a, a formula um, for the voltage induced equaling the self inductance I, which is what you commonly find. Um, just uh, sorry, L is inductance, self inductance, um, times by the change in current um, divided by the change in time, and that's that's really important. Okay, so self inductance. Um, the other application is if you open your switch and you turn it off. Um, um, there's going to be an opposed, you're likely to get sparks in a circuit like this, but you'll get opposition to the change um, that'll try and keep the current on and try and keep the, um, the lamp on and all that kind of stuff, but you don't see it in that sort of circuit arrangement because it's too easy to break it. If you have this sort of circuit arrangement, and um, here's our switch, and you have like a um, they often use like a little neon lamp because it deals with high voltages better than uh, you can just do it like that. Let's do a lamp, but it's a neon lamp, and it um, uh, deals with high voltage better than filament lamps and LEDs and all that kind of stuff. You can see it with LEDs, but when you turn this on straight away, this particular circuit, um, it's going to the light will go straight on because um, the, uh, you've got that parallel branch and you don't have to sort of panic about um, the inductor because the inductor's in the wrong position to be opposing this so it'll just oppose, it'll add to it effectively which is kind of funny um, but uh, then anyway you, you open the switch so you disconnect the power supply and all of a sudden you've got a closed loop around here and because the current's trying to switch off, this is going to induce an enormous voltage really fast, and then and that's going to cause this to flash, the neon light or the lamp to flash to stay on. I think the lamp's probably not going to work too well, but um, yeah. So that's that's the other application of that. And one more thing that's useful to note is you can talk about the energy stored in the inductor, and it's got a familiar looking formula like your kinetic energy formula and, and um, energy stored in a spring formula. The energy stored in an inductor is half the inductance, the self-inductance, times by the current squared. Okay, And this is for when a, with a steady state, you've turned it on and it's running at a steady state, um, and you've got uh, just a no voltage drop across it, it's just a piece of wire, but it's a coil, and, and the energy stored in that coil in the magnetic field, that has to be released once you switch it off, um, is half L I squared. Really cool. Um, the way, the reason why those formulas all look the same, just out of interest, is because you're usually starting from a graph where you've got um, the the energy. Uh, what's this? This is going to be the energy in the current. No, not the energy in the current. Um, area under the graph is the energy. It's probably voltage and current or something like that. Um, and time, there we go, <laughs> you can work it out for yourself, I've never pondered that one before um, but that's what it is um, quickly go up and have a look and see if I've covered everything I wanted to cover energy storm data, yes so that's inductors very cool, very very useful but you don't commonly hear about them, we don't commonly use them in, in um, electronics uh, unless you're making um, filter circuits um, filtering out um, oh, that's a good point filtering out um, uh, uh, high frequencies yeah, high frequencies capacitors pass through but high frequencies um, inductors don't allow because they're opposing the change so if you're rapidly um, changing back and forward and just an inductor there's going to be opposition but anyway we'll get to that when we talk about AC just a little heads up on that